Due to just better, better, better uh, uh, health uh, for themselves, it, it, so it's not it's not an all because I always see mm. HIV slash AIDS, but that's not really the case. You can have and live with HIV and never acquire AIDS. Absolutely, um, and it's just from what you said, medication, and then also living a healthy lifestyle. So who's so I want to go back in time because A, this used to be a white gay male disease and then like everybody else started to get it. Where are we now? What what are the new infections? I know Jose made any point. Um
Are there specific ways? I'll say this very badly. Are there easier ways to get HIV? Is it if you like it's your, in sharing needles? Those kinds That's of issues. That's probably your fastest route. To is, go is, this is, blood, is don't, blood don't like transmission. the blood transmission. Um, and then um, men who have sex with men, that is generally another, you know, um, fast route uh, if we want to put it in that way. Right. Anal sex. I mean, that yeah. doesn't necessarily mean men. Anal sex Correct. is anal sex. So um, that's a high risk activity. Whether I wear a condom or not. Well, obviously using a condom decreases um, the opportunity because it's a barrier. But it doesn't, it's not 100% safe. Nothing is 100% except the abstinence. That's the only thing that's 100%. Okay. I just wanted to get that point. Um, so now we're at Fast Track. How did St. Louis get to be chosen and what is Fast Track? Yeah, so Fast Track is a global initiative that actually started in Paris in 2014. Um, and so it's over 300 cities and municipalities who commit to um, ending the AIDS epidemic by 2030. Um, and so um, what has to happen is that you have to have um, uh, your political um, buy-in actually to sign off on uh, declaring that your city is a fast track city. And so they're committing um, to the pillars and the efforts to decrypt to um, end the AIDS epidemic by 2030. So in St. Louis, it took place December 1st of last year, and it consisted of Mayor Lida Poussin, as well as the County Executive Sam Page signing on the um, the proclamation committing the region unto becoming a fast track city. And what are some of the, I know there's this 90-90-90 pillar around this initiative, what, what is that? Yeah, so 90% of those living with HIV will be aware of their HIV status. 90% um, of those um, will be on um, medication, and then 90% will be virally suppressed. So those are the 90-90 targets, but there are seven pillars um, to go along with it as well. Why would I want to know my status? Because I may be low income, I may uh, not be receiving any medical benefits from any sort. And so you're asking me to learn something that I will not have any ability to do anything about. So that's a really big misconception yeah. um, that there is nothing, because there there are a lot of um, resources available for those HIV positive um, who may be uninsured, underinsured, um, whatever the case may be. Yeah, and then we could even back it up. The first, I would say you want to know your status for your own peace of mind mm -hmm. because the quicker you can get on antiretroviral uh, medications, the better your long-term health outcomes are going to be. We know that for folks who get on medications right away, when they are HIV positive, not necessarily with an AIDS diagnosis because we never want anybody to get an AIDS diagnosis, if they get on and stay on their medications, they can expect to... Uh, live a normal lifespan, a normal, healthy life. So that is the first reason why you would want to know your HIV status. The second is so that you can protect other people. Um, if you are afraid of living with the disease and the burden, imagine, you know, giving that fear to somebody else. So um, we know that when people get on an antiretroviral um, treatment and they become what is called untectal, where there's so little virus in their blood that you basically can't find it in the lab test. That person cannot transmit HIV through sex, um, which is, as we discussed earlier, the number one way that people uh, become HIV infected. So uh, you protect yourself, you protect other people, and that is the only way this 999 works. So how do you, how do you get two people um, and I, I guess bargain with them on you need to have your status. I think it's it's education and awareness, and so that can look like several different forms. That looks like um, outreach. That looks like um, social media. That looks like um, community centers. I mean, uh, providing education. It looks like like everything. It looks yeah, and. Um, Around it is, I think, is probably key for 
particularly in the black community, you know, where we don't talk about some of these things um, um, because a lot of I mean, the answer we things that go along with HIV, people tend to blame the person who's infected for their infection and there's just a lot of stigma around it versus looking at it as a health issue, which is what it is. Right. Now, I know, so I want to go back to the point of uh, men having sex with men, mm -hmm. um, on the download issue, and immediately therefore, if I have HIV, I'm gay, which it still continues to be a stigma in the African American community. And so, how do we target those individuals to begin to get them to, to, to I'm not trying to out you as much as I'm trying to help you. As you say, this is a medical issue, this is a health issue. I don't really care what your, how you got it, you got it. And, and now let's, let's deal with it. One of the things I think we have to take away is uh, perpetuating the stigma that because you are MSM, then, then you must have, you must have HIV. So I think like that needs to be kind of taken out of um, the conversation. I think if you are having sex, then you are, um, then you can get HIV, and it's just if they having if anybody having sex with anybody else can get it. Is it's at risk? Is yeah. at risk, and that's that's just it. So it's not necessarily not necessarily like exclusively tied to behavior. It's just if you're having sex, um, and so I think that we need to change the narrative, and also I think um, we need to treat it more as a chronic disease because that's what it is. So when you go into your healthcare provider, that should be part of the regular conversation. Um, when was the last time you had an HIV test? You like to have an HIV test? No different than the same. Um, So I think we all play a part into making it um, just basic normal comprehensive health care should be included and not necessarily so separate because they can just stigmatize it. Sorry, doctors should, doctor should be asking the question. And, and, and so I would argue that no matter what you tell them, well, I haven't had seven years, still, take, take it to test. I mean, I think it, it definitely, no different than any other test, your doctor will say, okay, based on this, I recommend you take this test. It should be, um, have a conversation, but um, you know, depending on whatever, whatever you have going on, then they should determine. Yeah, and I know like a lot of emergency rooms now have like an opt out, you have to <coughs> opt out of a test, you know, they make it as part of the routine, you know, Absolutely. screening of when you go in and present with certain symptoms. What are some of the, who are some of the partners um, related to the Fast Track Initiative? Um, so we have obviously the city, the county, um, WashU. And that's the county health department? The county health department. Um, WashU, Doorways, um, uh, Vivian Health, formerly known as St. Louis Effort for AIDS, Wings and Associates, um, Food um, Outreach. Food um, Outreach. Um, and, then, and do they all Missouri have Department of Health and Senior Services? Do all do they all have individual roles, or is there sort of a coordinated role that people are supposed to be doing? Yeah. So um, when we met Ellison first, that was the collective steering committee of the body, and then from then, so we have um, that's the steering committee, but then we have different um, uh, committees that work on certain pieces. So everybody has a role to play, but we're collective unit. And I think it's important to mention that this work was going on prior Absolutely. to, you know, like all of these agencies and um, organizations that she's talking about have been sitting around the Ryan White Planning Council table, um, which is like our um, region's collective group of um, positive people and service providers. We've all been collaborating for a long time, but this makes it official. It puts some real goals in place and um, gives us these pillars, as Brandon was saying, to um, work toward um, and meeting um, this uh, international goal. Is there, I'm going to assume there's not a penalty if you don't reach it, but is there, um, how does this increase the effort or does it crystallize uh, the effort because it says we want to meet these specific goals? Yeah, kind of like said we we already wanted to meet these goals these aren't like anything new you might 
um, people to be body support. You want people to have access to um, medication and treatment. You want people to know that. These are all things that we've been working on. Inception in the early 90s. Absolutely. Right. So this it kind of has like more of the um, political support by having um, the mayor and the county executive. So it gives us an opportunity to leverage resources in a way that we probably um, do to some degree. But this is a, a, a larger push to have those resources leveraged and um, continue the work that we have already already started. And there's a little competition kind of between jurisdictions or cities that have signed on with this. I think like New York is the made their targets. Yeah, yeah, they made their targets. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, that's something for us to aspire to. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to lead the way in um, a lot of HIV care and initiatives anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it's a way for us to look at the best practices that are going on um, around the country and internationally and to adopt those here instead how are some of the outreach efforts being conducted? How are we getting the word out to the people on the street? Yeah. Um, so, this is one way, but then also any kind and of. And thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. I appreciate that. But then, also, um, like I said, in the summer first, there was a press conference. So, that picked up a lot of being um, that went. Um, it was picked up by all of the local news. Um, and then also, um, we've been getting you know, interest from other community. Um, who are interested in wanting to, be able to take part of it. So it's been a lot of media, um, social media, um, and then community events. Um, to which is there, um, are there any particular things? I know they're going on Friday, but are there any uh, any community gatherings, any other activities that are going on that people can follow uh, either on Facebook or LinkedIn or some other, so they can follow this along the way. And how, and how, you know, I, I know that this show is going to reach a certain segment of people who are probably not the people who you want to, to really target. How are we getting down to the street level where, um, hey, why don't you get tested? Hey, why don't you get tested kind of thing? Okay, so just so I'm clear, so you're talking about fast track or just getting tested each other? Well, um, fast or both. Or both. Okay. Yes. both. Okay. Because one feeds into the other. Okay, so, so um, we have our first um, fast track sponsored event on Thursday, February 6th at Harris Stowe. Thursday. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think you were referring to Black AIDS Awareness Day, which is Friday. Ah, February yes, thank 7th. you. Thank yes. you. Thank you for the <laughs> stay.
So that allows somebody who is not a, a professional or official right. to have contact with person that have a and say, hey, have you done X, Y, and Z? Yeah. And that's the most effective communication. Yeah, absolutely it is. Because then it's just non-threatening. Friend is doing my hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And we're just talking about it. I, I have those defenses down. And um, that's the best way to get information and everybody else. And those are things anyway. Right, right. Yeah, that's why I add, a, add the, 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 the education piece to that Incorrect information. Correct because information. Because there's, I mean, how many times do you get people who ask you things and it's just so skewed and you're right. like, wow, I can't believe this kind of mis misinformation is still out there. Right. There's so much misinformation. People think there's a cure and there's not. Mm -hmm. um, and people think that, you know, you're going to live short life span or die when that is absolutely not the case. That does not have to be the case. But well, we only have one person, literally, who has publicly come out and said, I have HIV, and has lived a long and vigorous life, and that's Andrew Jones. We don't have any other role models, I don't think, that have actually done that, for, it's certainly for African Americans. And that goes back to the stigma. Because certainly they exist. We just don't know about it. Oh, sure. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so, I want to turn the corner just a little bit. What's doorways? Well, doorways, <laughs> you want the official and interfaith organization that provides housing and related supportive services to improve the quality of life and health outcomes for people living with HIV or affected by HIV. So, um, when you think about our organization, called the social determinants of health because so much of the time we hear from the health department and I'm not emailing you know, about the biomedical <laughs> approach in uh, solving HIV but the fact of the matter is when um, we poll our consumers and the people who use services most often the things that they say they need help with is housing and um, the other things that keep person stable and so without housing there is no health care and that's how we got formed back in the late 80s. Um, at that time, it was a reaction to the stigma and people having an HIV diagnosis who were thrown out on the streets by their family through panic, fear, or um, what have you. But as HIV has changed over time and it affects more and more homeless and marginalized populations, um, there in lies um, the real need for doorways to these people stable so that they can engage in a medication regimen and do all the things they need to do to take care of their health care. So that's why we say housing is health care. So part of what the doorways provide is housing. Yes. And you have a site for that. We have multiple sites across the city. housing developments and those range from uh, our triple our licensed medical um, uh, residential care facility where people with advanced illness live to buildings that we have where people live independently on their own with some sports but really only like one in ten of our clients actually lives in the doorways so most people live out in the community on their own um, and they have a health bout or some um, issue that they need some support from us on time to time and that could be assistance with rent, that could be assistance with utility payments or um, our emergency housing program where we take folks out of literal homelessness and put them on the path, path of housing stability. So our programs really um, range uh, depending on 
what an individual client needs. Um, and we do that in metro area. We also do that in a total of 132 counties in the city of Illinois. So if you think about the race being headquartered out of the city of St. Louis, our services go all the way down to Springfield, Missouri, and up to Springfield, Illinois. Are people referred to you? How do people find you? Uh, well, that's the great thing about this Ryan White network of providers that we have. Um, there is something called medical case management that anyone, I guess, who tests positive for HIV can become involved in and encourage that. Um, and those folks do an assessment of need when someone becomes enrolled, and usually nine times out of ten housing is a factor, particularly for low-income people with HIV. And in our region, most people with HIV are low-income. I think something like close to 80% live in the low poverty line. Mm. Um, so um, even if you're not ha um, homeless at that point, you're probably what we call precariously housed. You know, I'm doubling up with Randa, right. or I'm somewhere that's unsafe or what have you because, you know, folks are living on the margin. And so that's how we get our referrals. We also get our referrals through the coordinated entry system um, through the different homeless uh, continuum of care uh, providers in the city. And I'm sure probably done a, a show on the COC or continuum of care and doorways is a part of that. So that coordinated entry, um, if someone has an HIV diagnosis, they usually get bumped up high on the priority list, and we are the HIV front door for the city for coordinated entry. Now, I saw on your um, website, you serve roughly 3,000 people a year, 32% of the So 
two faces. No one's going to do this. No, I think he did good for a bit. Um, because I think that's the way we were doing it at that time. I think that's like in the 80s. What the fuck was it up here? One of my favorite movies. I think he was the first one. Maybe. Um, it's like people were facing. I mean, that was five years from the back. You know, it was just to death. You know, exactly. it wasn't until the mid, mid-90s when the anti-retrovirals virals came out that um, lifespans were prolonged in the way that they are now. Exactly. So I think it served the purpose for that time. But um, it's just like over the table before it's changed and it makes it so far in the message. So it doesn't necessarily look like they now. If that makes sense. Right. At least it should. Because yeah. you know, there are cases where people have been out of um, health care, particularly in the United States, mm-hmm. where we see that our people are most different than somebody. helping people assess what kind of skills they have for them to be incarcerated, you know, okay, how can we get around that area, whatever the case may be. The CRC was helping them work up resume and apply for the types of jobs that are uh, unavailable. 
Um, so she's got a great record with that, and that's an area we're looking to expand um, because so many of our folks um, want to be employed, even if they've been on disability for a while. Just need um, help and encouragement with how to do that. Um, we have a number of life skills and um, skill building and workshops that we do throughout here. Um, and we do things, I mean, it varies from art therapy to you name it. We're always rotating the different program that we have at the OS facilities to um, give our clients a broad exposure and to just bring in whatever kind of services we think people need. And then we do things like, um, because we're an interfaith organization, we might have Bible study. We've got a number of clergy people who are on our board who might set up a Bible study at a different um, building. And, you know, of course, we don't mandate that anybody attend anything like that. But just one more way for people to become a community in, you know, at a um, residence. So it really varies, but we try to keep our fresh. We try to uh, encourage people to live healthy lives. One of the things we did with Operation Food Search was um, a healthy eating class where we got sponsorship to bring them in and um, they would make a dish with the women and children at our, our um, family facility and then those people could um, got all the ingredients at the end of the class to make it again. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the kinds of things we do and uh, I think our clients really appreciate situation. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that's very important for somebody to be able to uh, talk out yeah. what is going on. Yeah, we know like uh, in at least one of our programs we have five percent of the clients in that program by the state of education. Particularly the Anytime you can move barrier, it will help, particularly lower income people who, um, so, it, you know, it would need to be close in the neighborhood. If you can get the same day appointment, that would be wonderful. Um, I don't know what all the efforts are specifically, but there is a Yeah. 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 
talk about if you're a youth, and that's a different right. I'm telling So, what does the general public really know about the fans' transition and how they might be able to play a role in getting these pillars taken? doesn't seem to be as, um, it doesn't seem to be around like it was, I would say, maybe 10 years ago, so maybe five years ago, but we talk about how the public can get involved, isn't that literally
usually it's like two little three thousand pounds of pain on your body. It's like you're trying to make something like this. Yeah, If I get HIV, I'm going to get AIDS, and that's a difference. When if I just say HIV, I'm oh, okay. It's a possibility that I'm going to get HIV. I just think I'm going to get HIV. Wait, what is National Black HIV AIDS awareness uh, day? So it's the reason. Right, so you can hear the answer, so um, that's in it. Also, um, uh, is having an event on the 7th, um, and I know I watched you as a part of that. Um, it's called the um, Black Ball Expo. Um, and, uh, so that's oh.
medical conditions and stop the living, but you can experience a positive school life. Dispatch, we call it. <laughs> well, uh, great information about our programs and fundraisers and all of those things. Um, and uh, that's the best to take that to us. Now, um, you said there was a major announcement back in the middle. Do you want to share? Yeah, we are just trying to get it. That's okay. Yeah, we are very excited. Um, we will be great to grab this fall on a new campus for organization. Ellen um, Jefferson and Stoddard Street, a couple of uh, blocks south of her, the NGA campus is going. And um, that we will we'll be building uh, 50 units of housing. Um, and uh, that will be combined with the new programmatic and administrative headquarters for our Thank you. 